So students actually we have just done an activity which means to say that at, I mean I have told in the activity that you should be holding the stick at one end at the top and you should be suspending, really suspending the lower and at the bottom you have to ask your sibling or any of your cousin to hold the particular stick after you leave it. So what you have to note down is here I have given a mark on the stick at the bottom. So you have to see that how much far is that particular person able to catch the stick after you leave the stick. That has to be noted down by you. So we have to conclude like why we should perform this activity and from that activity what we are able to learn. Children actually in the previous classes few people might have known like what exactly we mean by stimulus. Stimulus is nothing but any external action done on the body of the organism and second thing with respect to that particular stimulus the organism has to give the response and that's what you have seen. So in this present lesson or present topic we shall see in depth like what is the exact scenario or what is the exact phenomenon that is occurring inside the organism. So as we have discussed if we need to perform any activity all the muscles inside the body of the organism should interdepend or should interact with each other in order to give an output of reaction from the organism. Okay, that's what is called as response. And children actually, what is the exact topic that I want to discuss is let us try to know what do we mean by coordination. What is coordination and why the coordination is required. So as you all know that the stimulus has to be carried inside the body of the organism. In a similar way, the response has to be carried on to that particular sense organ of the organism by the particular systems such that the coordination can be done inside the body of the organism to perform a response or to perform an action. So in our previous classes, we might ask whom, what do we mean by digestive system, what do we mean by respiratory system, etc. and etc. We say that in the higher organism means in the multicellular organism which in turn tells that whenever the organism is being is having more than one cell then it is termed as multicellular organism in a multicellular organism there are separate systems to carry on the separate metabolic activities of the organism similarly here actually one of the particular system is responsible in order to convey the stimulus and vice versa in order to convey the response to the sense organs that is nothing but the nervous system. Nervous system is the one which is responsible to conduct the particular stimulus and similar way in order to send the response to the sense organs where the organism needs to perform the activity. For example children, let us try to take a hot water bowl. As soon as we touch a hot water bowl, what we do? We will, I mean, we will be immediately drawing the hand back. Means to say that hot water bath is trying to provide the stimulus on the body. Means to say that any particular external action that is done on the body of the organism is termed as stimulus, and the concerned stimulus on the body of the organism should be conveyed or should be travelled or should be conducted inside the body of the organism to the brain because brain is like the captain of the body. For example, Indian cricket team is having a captain which, I mean who is Virat Kohli. He is the one who is coordinating all the players inside the team. Similarly, inside the body of the humans, we are having a brain which will try to coordinate or which will try to perform any actions of the organism. This particular brain is able to conduct the stimulus and with respect to that stimulus, what action has to be performed or what reaction has to be performed by the body has to be sent by that particular brain to the sense organs then only the organism can show the respective response. Okay children, so let us try to see that what are the different types of the, the nerves that are present inside the body and what are the contributions that are made by different researchers or different biologists. During one
A physiologist made by Gallup between 129 and 280. 80 means to say that after death. So, in order to uh, divide the particular time into, into the respective things, depending upon the birth of the Christ, they have just tried to categorize it as before Christ and after death. So, here actually, Gallup is the person who lives from 129 to 280. And he is a physiologist, means to say that he tries to deal with the internal, he is having some particular knowledge regarding the internal activities of an organism. So, one day a patient has come to Mr. Gallen saying that, Sir, I have fell down from my vehicle, from my chariot, and after falling down from that particular, from my vehicle, it has caused an injury on my neck because of which. I am not able to feel the activities done by the arm. Means to say that he is not able to know or he is not able to sense the actions that are being performed by the hand. Means to say that the activities are being done by the hand. Though the activities are being done, he is not able to sense. Means to say that, for example, let us take children. If you try to sit on the floor for longer times, what you will feel, you will be feeling some particular numbness in the leg. Some particular numbness means to say that the leg is able to perform the activities although you are not able to sense those particular activities. So after that, after listening to that particular situation, Mr. Gallen has come to a conclusion that there are two types of nerves present inside the body of the organism. What are they? They are nothing but the afferent nerves and the efferent nerves. Afferent nerves means to say that the nerves which carry the impulse or the stimulus inside the body of the organism from the sense organs to the brain. Afferent nerves are the nerves which carry the information from the sense organs to the brain. This is being concluded by Mr. Gallen, who was a physiologist who lived from 129 to 280 and he also trying to distinguish another type of nerves as the efferent nerves. Efferent nerves are nothing but the nerves which are able to give the information from the brain to the sense organs. We say that as we have discussed earlier, we have took an example of the hot water ball or hot water ball. So immediately after touching that particular thing, the information is sent from the sense organs to the brain by afferent nerves and the brain is able to send the response that has to be shown by the organism and that particular response from the brain is carried on by the afferent nerves. Try to remember only one, don't try to remember both afferent and afferent. Afferent is nothing but, for example, if you try to remember the word exit, exit is nothing but going out. Efferent means giving out. The information is being fed to the brain or is being conducted to the brain and from the brain the message is being given out to the sense organs. If you try to remember E in exit, you can easily remember the word efferent nerves. So never try to remember both. Please try to remember one very confidently such that you can get the other answer that is efferent nerves. Okay? So now we are clear that there are two types of nerves present in the organism. One type of nerves are responsible to conduct the information and another type of nerves are responsible to give the information that is in respect to that particular stimulus which is also termed as coordination. And this whole thing was concluded by Mr. Gallagher. So these are the particular things which are performing inside the body of the organism with respect to the stimulus and as soon as the stimulus is given to the body what exactly is the response that has to be given by the body with respect to that particular stimulus. So, children actually, please note down why I am turning the particular session. Never try to be relaxed or never try to take everything is granted. As I have told earlier, please do not try to watch this particular thing as your online movie. So please try to stay focused on this particular subject and the topic.
and then we shall try to know what exactly are the differences between afferent, efferent and now let us just try to move on to the next topic of the nervous system that is number one the voluntary and involuntary so children actually I think we have already known about the involuntary functions and the voluntary functions in the previous classes which dealt with the striated muscle and also the spindle shaped muscle which is an involuntary muscle. The striated muscles are termed as the voluntary muscles which means to say that voluntary as the name itself implies. Voluntary means to say that the actions which are performed by the organism according to the wish of the organism. For example, I just want to run. I want to run. Running is nothing but the voluntary action means to say that Whenever I want to run, I will run. Whenever I want to stop, I will stop. That is the, that's the voluntary action, for example. And the next one, that is involuntary action. Involuntary action is nothing but any action that is performed by the organism without the wish of the organism. For example, let us try to consider the heartbeat. For example, while you are going to bed in the night, you cannot tell the heart that, my dear heart, from morning onwards, you have been performing the functions. So night, you also can take rest along with me because I am going to bed. No, you can never say that or you can never tell me to say that. Some particular functions can be performed by the organism with the wish of the organism instead and some of the functions cannot be performed as far as the wish of the organism is concerned. That is nothing but the heartbeat, what, what we have told or the respiration etc and etc. Okay, so now let us try to see there is another type of reaction called as reflex action. What do we mean by reflex action? All the reflex actions can be considered as the involuntary actions. All the particular reflex actions can be considered as the involuntary actions. Let me give some of the examples for the reflex actions. As we have discussed earlier, touching the hot ball, and we try to, if we try to take the particular leg, and if we try to sit on the particular platform, if we try to suspend our legs free, and if we hit the particular knee, knee part with any particular stick or any particular mobile, if we try to just try to stimulate it, or if we try to depend, or if we try to provide any particular stimulus. Without knowing what will happen, the forearm or the leg which is being freely suspended will try to move. Means to say that there we are not performing any activity or for example, let us try to take the activity of sneezing. Sneezing, so whenever any particular disturbance is there in the air that we breathe in, we will immediately get the sneezing. Sneeze, which means to say that one of the reflex action. Sir, what is the difference between reflex action and involuntary action, sir? You are trying to tell that reflex actions are the involuntary actions. So, can you people please try to tell me or please try to note what exactly is the difference between the reflex action and involuntary action? Can you please tell me is there any particular difference and or if any difference is there, what is the difference between the reflex action and the involuntary action? Very simple children. For the reflex action, the stimulus is required and for the involuntary action, stimulus is not required. Means to say that for the heartbeat, what we have known, we are telling that heartbeat is nothing but an involuntary function. For the heart to perform its activity, we are not providing any particular stimulus. Similarly, so whenever the reflex actions are being done, any particular external stimulus have to be provided on to the organism, then only the organism can show the particular response. So the only difference between involuntary function and the reflex action is nothing but for the reflex action a stimulus is required and for the involuntary actions there is no requirement of any particular stimulus. So now, 
what are the particular cells or what is the driving force which is performing all these functions. So we have told that we are having a separate system inside the body of the organism which is termed as the nervous system and that particular nervous system is taking the responsibility of conducting the stimulus and giving the response with the help of this coordination in between the different parties. So now, is the nervous system an independent one? No, it is a dependent one. Nervous system is in turn made up of many cells which are termed as neurons. Neurons are the ones which can be called as the nerve cells. Neurons are nothing but the nerve cells which are trying to coordinate or which are trying to assemble in order to form a particular system which is called as nervous system. May to say that the nervous system is having millions and trillions of these particular neurons which can also be called as the nerve cells. The cells of the nervous system are termed as the neurons and what we have told the neurons can be classified or categorized into two. They are number one the apparent neurons and number two the different nerves which are nothing but the nerves which are responsible to give the information from the sense organs to the brain and from the brain to the sense organs to the respective stimulus that is being taken part or taking help of the coordination inside the body of the organism. So, this is a particular thing which I have been concluded with Mr. Gallen. Mr. Gallen wants to say that though the particular activities are being done by the organism, some particular sensation is being lost, means to say that there is one which is trying to control these particular actions inside the body of the organism. And that particular control can be called as the central nervous system. So, better I clean the board, erase the board such that I can just go on with writing the next part. Thank you.